Hi, I'm Andre from the Ontario Institute for Cancer Research, and we have put together a orchestration tool to help us manage and run our workflows that I'm going to tell you about today. Um, so when it comes to running workflows, I think there are a few questions that are worth considering. Um, we have the what to execute and when to execute it, and on what input. And what to execute and when to execute it are pretty well handled now by workflow engines. You can give them a good description of the tools you want to run and how to put them together, and then they will go off and do the necessary scheduling to get that work done. The what to run it on is kind of a problem that's left up to you, the user, and what our orchestration tool, Shesmu, is meant to address. And Shesmu also handles some of the when, but in a more broad context. So when you give a workflow a, um, a job to execute, it will take care of the when in terms of scheduling the individual units. But what we are getting out of Shesmu scheduling is a more broad, is now a good time to launch this kind of thing? Do we have resources? Is this a priority? So Shesmu interacts with roughly three groups of people. There are the workflow developers who are creating new workflows need to figure out what data will be ingested by those workflows. There is a bioinformatics operations group that is responsible for making sure that when stuff lands in the system, either by coming off a sequencer or being uh, handed in externally, that that data makes it through to the end and gets um, properly distributed to the users um, or customers that need it. And then there is a kind of IT function for the people who are keeping all of that infrastructure alive and healthy and are sort of agnostic to the needs of what the, uh, what the customers actually want in their analysis. So the way that Chesmu operates is it acquires data from other systems and tries to analyze that data using small programs called olives that um, are capable of reading that state and manipulating it to figure out what to do. And the things to do are called actions. And then the Chesmu scheduler can uh, analyze and run those actions and those actions go off to other systems, including your workflow engine, and actually get stuff done. Um, so as an example for how our system operates, we start off with a laboratory information system. We're using one called MISO, and it talks to our sequencers and it keeps track of all of our run information. So we have a BCL to FASTQ all of inside of Shesmu that knows how to ingest all of that run metadata from MISO and generate PCL to FASTQ workflow actions that can go and correctly um, extract the data from the runs and prepare fast queues. Those run on our workflow engine and a record is written out for every file that is generated. We then have a BWA mem olive that can ingest all of that file metadata, pick out the appropriate fast queue pairs and coupled with the right project information, figure out how to run them with BWA mem and again, write back that information to the workflow engine's uh, file output store. Now, we have a BCL to FASTQ workflow that adds some metadata to the file that can say whether any reads were generated or not. So we have another olive that ingests all of that file metadata, and if it finds files with no reads in them, it files a ticket to our lab to be like, you know, there was something you told us was on the sequencer, and when we ran it, there wasn't anything. How do you want to deal with that? And that's not a workflow, it's a ticket in JIRA. So what do these olives look like? Uh, this is an example of one of our production olives. It runs FASTQC. So up at the top, there's a version number that's just the version of the uh, olive language, and then there is the data format that we are going to ingest. Our uh, workflow engine produces what we have termed the Cerberus file provenance format. Um, so that is our internal format and has data that we consider relevant for our institution. Um, so we start off with an olive that tries to pull out relevant fast queues and then it groups them. Uh, this one is assuming that they are uh, a dual read. So it finds both the read one and read two fast queue and it finds the actual path and a bunch of metadata so that we can link the output of one workflow to the input of the next. Um, it does a pick max 
to find the latest version in case it's been run multiple times. And then it instructs our workflow engine how it needs to actually set the parameters for that workflow. Um, and you might ask the question, why did you create a programming language? And I think the answer is self-evident when you consider that, you know, so much of bioinformatics is so very hierarchical. You have files that belong to workflows, belong to libraries, belong to biopsies, to patients, to cohorts, and to studies. And, you know, that hierarchy makes for really simple grouping. Until you do QC, in which case you start getting groups of files that aren't really connected to anything. Oh yeah, and then we do tumor and normal analysis where we want really specific groups of semi-patient related information. And oh yeah, we, we co-clean our samples. So then we're taking really weird swaths of data to try to figure out how to co-clean. And we have sample swap detection, which really shouldn't be based on anything in the hierarchy. It should be based on what was physically in the lab at the same time. Okay, so this is terrible. Um, what we really need is good grouping. That is why we built an all of language so that we can do grouping and we can do it in a way that is reliable and easy to understand and prevents us from making mistakes. If anyone has used MySQL, you may have been bitten by the bug where you can access columns that you shouldn't be able to access during a grouping operation and then you get out random data, which is not ideal. Um, so what we really tried to do was make Chesmo good for the workflow developers to be able to put together an olive quickly. And there is a built-in simulator so you can design and test your olive um, from the comfort of your web browser and you can actually see the output that would be produced and you can iteratively uh, adjust your olives until you're happy with the output. And we also want it to be easy for our operations group. So there's a lot of information about what's going on in a Shesma server. You can see data flowing through the system. And part of what we do is provide a really sophisticated filtering system so that you can take all the actions from all your different workflows and find a problem. If you have missing data or uh, data that you need to follow up on or failed problems, you can easily group and find them. And we also built Shesma to be a handoff system. So you can create a search and then put that search in a ticket and say, okay, this is so-and-so's problem to deal with and have that removed from the operations dashboard and give that person their own personal dashboard of problems that they have to follow up on. Um, the actions themselves are unique to um, the different types of or the, the display for actions is unique to the different types of actions. So you can choose to display whatever information is relevant to your workflow engine. So this is an example action uh, from our reporting system uh, that has very little information associated with it. Uh, whereas we have ones that are associated with our workflow system that can pull out all kinds of data, including where logs are and other things that our uh, operations group wants to know and they can also have um, these commands associated with them. So if we have things that failed for transient reasons, all of our um, workflow actions can have buttons associated with them to get them to try to retry automatically. So the way that Chesmo is designed is that you have a large amount of control over what goes into the system. And everything that is um, in color on here is something that is a plugin that you can control. So the all of themselves are programs. You can provide support functions and data to them in any format you need. They can produce debugging output and you can decide where that goes. Um, the actions are also entirely pluggable and the input formats uh, that are necessary. Um, the actions can make use of logging services and alerting services that are provided as plugins. Currently we support Prometheus and low key for that, but if you have something else, that's not a problem. We also have this issue of we sometimes want actions to um, not run right now because of overload conditions or you know, other external signals. So there is a back pressure system called throttlers that allow you to suspend actions um, until there is a more uh, ideal time to run them. 
And as for plugins out of the box, we provide a variety of them. There are um, SFTP plugins, um, Jira, uh, a bunch of text file support, our reporting system, Guanyin, um, MongoDB, and our limbs abstraction, Pinary. Um, the design of actions is such that um, each action can get information from two places. It can get it from the configuration for that plugin, um, and it can get it from the olives. So for our Jira plugin, uh, some of the configuration, like what server to use and how to log into it, is provided from a standard configuration that um, is programmed into the Shesmu server, and then the olive can generate summary and assignee information in whatever way it pleases. Now, Shesmu actions don't remember anything in and of themselves. So every time you restart a Shesmu server, it's a blank slate that has to figure itself out over again. So the actions are less a do this and more a figure out if this is done. In the case of a Jira action that is go to Jira, search to find if you find a ticket that is open, you are good. If you don't find one, um, you need to create one not simply open a ticket every time you're executed. So if you want to install Shesmu, there is a fairly large uh, overhead in terms of developing plugins that are unique to your institution's need. You need to pull in the data that you have and figure out how you're going to make actions that know when they're done uh, that suits your particular situation. So a lot of the questions that you're going to have to answer are what format is your data in? And that kind of goes down a rabbit hole of discovering every data hygiene issue that you have. Uh, we had a lot of, this is never null. And this string contains a number always. That turned out to be very not true when we started looking into it. Um, and deciding whether a workflow has been previously run is a problem that is unique to each institution. That might be logs, that might be a metadata database that you have, that might be simply checking for files to exist on disk. Um, and again, once you have actions that are working with your institute, deciding what information you want to display is um, different for everyone. So we have figured out what information we want to pull out of different systems and make it available. Um, to that end, our workflow engine has a lot of problems and its client is full of uh, multi-threading issues and we have had a lot of cache consistency problems working around its bugs um, and that can be a roadblock to deployment. Um, so if you're looking for something that can ingest tabular data and then determine what workflows to run, that is what Shesmo is built to do. And it's built to do that from multiple systems and it's built to do that to allow you to rapidly develop the components you need to actually act on that data. And it wants to support your operations group in providing a lot of monitoring on that data. If you're developing the kind of workflows where you have a lot of small workflows that need to be strung together, the Olive language provides a great way to apply decision-making to connect those steps together. And the way that the system is designed is that you can pull humans into the loop where necessary through tickets and alerts and things like that. Uh, to get that off the ground from you, it needs development of actions that are specific to your organization and development of input data formats and how to acquire that data that is, again, specific to your organization. And then finally, the development of olives that are specific to your institute. Um, for development, uh, we've had a team of Shesmu developers, and we've also had uh, many victims uh, from our uh, institute who have been developing and testing Shesmu through the development of our workflows. And that is everything. Thank you very much.